Hey, it's Aaron from GameBadoos.com, and today I'm taking a look at The 100 Tori, which is an abstract strategy tile placement game from played from one to four players, recommended for ages eight and up, and I guess plays in around 45 minutes, according to the estimates from the people who made it. They would probably know, right? Pencil First is the publisher of The 100 Tori. Game Design and Poetry is by Scott Caputo. Illustration and graphic design is by Vincent Detrait. Uh, game production development by Eduardo Boraf. Sorry if I'm, I, I, I apologize. And the Japan, Japanese history and cultural consultant was Lisa Wilcutt, uh, along with a, a team for some additional cultural review. So as I said, this is an abstract strategy game, tile placement uh, taking place in the Edo period of Japan. So you've seen the box. I mean, this it's a great box. You probably want to see what's in the box. I guess it'll be apropos of me to open the box and reveal what's in. I'll do that. We have 120 landmark tokens here comprised of uh, the fox statues, the lanterns, the bridges, gardens, stones, and water basins. The regular size the landmark tokens. We also have 42 game tiles, including one starter tile that has all of the aforementioned resources on them. There's also 24 large landmark tokens. There's also 20 character tokens and four enclosure tokens. There's also 10 achievement tokens here for all the very, for all the characters and the enclosures and some of the bonuses as well. The game also comes with eight coins. So each player would get two. There's also two meeples for the samurai and the poet. And you know it, I apologize. There's also two info boards that are double-sided, multiple languages. That's nice, I like that. And I don't have space for it, uh, but there's also a board, a separate board for the solo mode, which you are playing against Unatsu. And these are mini expansions. So you have the Koi mini expansion in which every character gets, there's four different types of cards. Every character gets one. You can use them for special abilities. If they go unused, they're worth a point at the end of the game, which is kind of nice. And the other expansion is uh, the, uh, it's the Toku mini expansion. Toku cards can be placed on top of some of the other resources and can be earned throughout the game. Uh, if they are unspent, unused, they are worth a point at the end of the game. More on that later. So how the game is played is every player would start off with two tiles and typically you're allowed to play a tile and then draw back up to two. You start off with two coins. Uh, these are resources that can be used to, to get help. Everybody needs help. So how help works is there are people uh, who live in the area who can do certain things for you. For example, the vendor for one resource, meaning one coin or other resources you get, I'll get into that in a second, for one resource will allow you to discard a tile and draw two tiles. A samurai will allow you to place the samurai onto a space so that no one can actually put a tile there unless they pay the samurai to go somewhere else. The poet can be used to block a resource. You'll see why that's important in a moment. The geisha can play two tiles, but only score the second one. And the gardener can place a tile on top of another tile. That's very useful. That's why these are the resources that they cost in order to get their help. Uh, one, one, three, three, three. So. So how turn typically works is the first thing you would do or you're able to do if you want to is get help from one of these, one of these five people. You're allowed to do that. If you want, if you don't want to do that, you can simply expand your garden, meaning you take one of your tiles and you place it down. So let's say I placed this tile. And as you see, the center, the starting piece has all of the resources on it. And that's sort of, that's how you accrue resources. So as you see, the tile I put down has a fox on it, the fox statue, which matches up, which leads directly to the fox statue at the starter piece, 
which means I would earn one fox resource. And I would draw another tile and it will be the other player's turn. Now it's the second player's turn. So as you can see, there's a Tory, a blue Tory on this card. So we're out to place it here. Remember, you're matching like resources. So I have a water basin on this row which directly leads in connecting to this water basin here. So because I would have to go through a blue Tory, that means I would earn one water basin for matching those two. But the blue Tory means for each blue Tory you walk through, you earn a different resource other than the one you just matched. So I could take any one of the other five resources. Let's say I want a bridge, as long as it's not a water basin. Keep in mind, you have two coins to start with. Once they're gone, they're gone. The coins are equivalent to the resources you're getting in terms of uh, hiring help. So you could either spend the water basin, the bridge, the fox, any one of these resources or your coins. They're equivalent. It's just you don't earn more coins. Once they're gone, they are gone. Okay, to show you another example, this card has a red Tory on it. Were I to put this here, the first player will be matching up. The only resource on the card that's available on the road is this bridge. So this bridge would match up with the bridge here. Keep in mind, you don't have to only match resources up with the starter uh, tile. It's just the starter tile has to have all of them at the beginning in order to get any resources. So I'm matching up a bridge. So the bridge here, bridge here, but I'm going through a red and a blue Tory. Walking through a red Tory means you earn an additional resource of the one you just matched. So I would earn two bridges because the bridges match red Tory. I get an additional bridge, but I also would get uh, any one any one other resource because I walk through a blue Tory. Since I already have a fox there, fox statue. Let's see, I take an additional one. So now I have two fox statues because of the blue Tory. And I will draw back up. And that's that's how the game goes. Once you earn five of a resource, you would take the larger token. Pretend this was five. I would trade those in for the five piece token. If you earn five more, you get the 10 piece token. You just flip it over. But you don't do that until you actually earn it. So that is how you earn the large tokens. And then once you have 10, you can still get them, but there's no additional points. All the numbers you see, once they're in front of you, these are your victory points. These are points you get towards winning the game. Also, when you do employ the services of uh, one of the villagers, the first time you do it, pardon me, these should be flipped over. The first time you do it, uh, let's say you hired the vendor. The vendor would cost a single resource. So I would spend that or just spend one of these resources. Then I would get this vendor here, this vendor token. If I use the vendor a second time, I flip it over and now it's worth four points. If I use the vendor a third time, if I'm the first person to do that, I earn this. That'd be seven points total, but there's only one of these. There are one of these for each, uh, each person playing one through well, one through four. And the same thing for the samurai, the poet, the geisha and the gardener. There's also enclosure tokens. Uh, the first time you make an enclosure, meaning you have matching resources, you earn one of these enclosures. And if you do it once, you get this, you do it twice, three times, you get that for additional points. So enclosure would look like, like that, like you matching like resources together. Although maybe I'm incorrect because the example on the actual piece has a water basin and a fox. So maybe you don't have to have the same resource in order to get a resource you do. So these two water basins and within this enclosure, would mean, if I did this connected to everything else, obviously I would get a, I'm sorry, garden, excuse me. I would get a garden piece. So I'm, I, I am mistaken. I might've been doing that wrong. You don't have to have the same resource matching up. You do to get a resource because you're matching, but to earn the enclosure piece, you just have to have at least two resources that are enclosed together. Why you want to do that? I'm not really sure, but no one asked me.
That's typically how a game will go. You are recruiting resources by matching up like tiles and it can get really interesting when you, when the, when things really get laid out, I mean, you can really do some serious, uh, serious matching. Let me move this on. Just to give you an example of how, uh, some of the villagers are used. Uh, obviously, I should say, uh, the vendor allows you to basically um, discard two tiles, discard a tile, draw two. You play one, but then you don't re you don't draw back up at the end of your turn because you technically already have drawn two. So it lets you to mix up with the tiles you have, which is a good thing. The samurai just blocks a space entirely until she is hired to move elsewhere. That's very useful. Uh, the geisha allows you to play two tiles. You only get to you only get a chance to score one of them though. That can be very useful as well. And the gardener, that's really kind of crazy that you can just place tiles on top of another one. Very useful. However, the poet, uh, the poet is also interesting. Let's say I want to go through all these different Tori and let's say I want to skip because if I place this tile down, there's multiple resources on this tile. You have to pick one of them. You also have to pick the shortest distance between which are matching. So you can't, I can't match this to this because before I would get all the way here, there's another lantern. There's a lantern right here. So I can't naturally just match this up. You have to count tiles between matching things. So I would hire the poet to block that resource. And now I get a chance to go through all these other Tori to get back to the center tile. It's not always the center tile just to get back to matching, but I get the advantage. So I will get one tower for matching and then two, three, four. I get four towers because I would walk through three red Tory. Each red Tory is an additional resource of the one you matched. Same thing for blue. If I were to walk through a combination of red and blue, I would get the matching ones and I also get a different resource than the one I matched. You can get multiple of other resources, they just can't be the same one you match for a blue Tory. Once it really gets expanded, you can have, there's a lot of strategy into maximizing your turns trying to figure out where can I place this tile in order to get the most benefit because you really want to start earning a lot of resources so you can get these larger tokens then flip them over. And you also want to hire some help because they come with points as well. And these, these here are awarded to the person who has three 10 point pieces in front of them. First gets five points. Second one to do it gets three and whoever has, um, five, six, sorry, six of the five point upgrades get five points. The first person to do it. Second one will get three. So this is bonuses everywhere for you. You to earn. That's that. You also have, um, the Toku mini expansion. Um, each car allows you to do something different. This one would allow you to use a red Tory as a blue Tory. This one allows you to enlist the help of a poet for two resources instead of three. These are earned. These are placed on uh, the upgrade, the larger tokens. So when you get one, when you earn one, you put these on top. So you would earn one once you've gotten these. That's that expansion. And like I said, if you don't use them, uh, they are worth one point at the end of the game. So uh, for the Koi mini expansion, every player would get four of these cards. The first one allows you to employ the services of any of uh, the villagers for one, one resource. Very useful. Uh, these are out of order, but uh, the fourth one allows you to upgrade to the larger tokens with only having, I think four of the resources. So if you had four foxes for the little foxes. You could use this on your turn. You can use as many of these as you want to as well on a turn, which is interesting. And you could upgrade having just four to the five point piece. And I believe you can also upgrade having less than 10 to flip it over for the 10 point piece as well. This car would enable you to immediately gain three of any one of the six resources, just right then. The second card would enable you to employ the services of two villagers on a turn, provided you have the resources to pay them for the services. To be honest with you, I am not absolutely certain if the expansions were a Kickstarter only 
kind of thing. So I I don't believe it comes in the, the base game. Uh, so I would say check on that. At the end of the game, you would tally up how many points you have based on the cars sitting in front of you. And I believe ties are broken by the number of resources that you have left over, but the resources by themselves are not worth anything. If the cars in front of you do not have a, a large number in front of it, then these are just resources, but they, they can break ties. So that is how 100 Tori plays. Things like about the 100 Tori, we found it to be very enjoyable. It's a very fun game. We like the, the strategy of maximizing each tile you put down, you know, not trying to have a turn where you put something down and get nothing out of it if you can help it. So we found the strategy to be really fun. I mean, we clicked with us pretty much immediately. We really enjoyed it. Uh, we like the components. There's a lot of them. <laughs> we, we do like the components. I think the art is really well done. The tiles were smaller than I expected them to be. But that's neither here nor there. Not a big deal. But yeah, I, th I think the components are really nice. You got the, the meeples here. and Everything has a nice feel. It's a nice look. A very good table presence. I like the fact that the rule book also provides some historical context to what all these landmarks and things mean or are meant in the Edo period. I found that to be not extensive, but it, it was nice that it was there. It was a good read. So just to learn a little bit more and get some context, which is good. And the last things that I definitely like is the fact that uh, there's a solo mode and it has its own separate board, uh, slightly altered rules. So I do like solitaire modes and games. I'm glad that one was included. However, for the things that I wasn't really big fan of, I had to tweak the rules a bit <clears throat> to make playing against Anatsu even I guess fun, the rules for the, for the solo game are you earn a tile. She earns two tiles and based on what the resources are on the tiles, uh, you would put them underneath the corresponding resources that you see here. Once she earns two tiles, she earns five points. Once she earns four in a, <clears throat> in a column, she earns 10. Uh, if there's a Tory on it, she gets even more resources. It's, I find, I found the, the, the rules, the rule set for the solo mode to be punishing. I didn't really enjoy it. I, I found myself so focused on stopping her from earning points that I barely had a, a chance to focus on anything for myself. Yeah, that is, uh, the 100 Tory. We liked it a lot. Want to try to play it today. It's a very fun game. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out more videos on the screen and uh, be safe out there. Remember, um, <clears throat> safety is not just for you, also for others. So that's going to do it. Take care and be blessed.